Hello everyone. Hello. We are so glad to meet once again in this moment. Uh, this is the most valuable time to listen to our prayer. So let us pray as we begin. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. Lord, you have been with us, you protected us, and you guided us in various ways. And Lord, now this moment we are before you sharing the Lord God. Lord, I pray that you empty the hearts of everyone. Satan works so much in our flesh to be against this world and also to discourage us. But Lord, I believe that the Holy Spirit with us is going to allow us to receive every single word that you are speaking out of us. Lord, I pray that all listeners and followers also be partaking this work of spreading the gospel to all people whom they know. Lord, we thank you. You pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, so at this moment we're going to read the book of Matthew chapter 25. Book of Matthew chapter 25. Please open Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14. Uh, and we're going to read up to verse 30. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his good to the goods to them. And one he gave five talents to another two, to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. Uh, but he who had received one went and dug into the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me, delivered to me five uh, talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown 
and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have uh, deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. Uh, for to everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance but from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth yes thank you we have read up to verse, verse 30 yeah, when you read this story, uh, in the beginning it says that the kingdom of God is like this. Which means if you want to know clearly how is the kingdom of God, we need to understand you know, this story very well. So now, according to the heart of Jesus, what is the kingdom of God, uh, according to the story that we have read? Uh, so there are many things you can talk about the kingdom of God. Uh, but one of them which is very important. It is knowing the heart of my master. Now if I know the heart of my master. Then I will live happily. I will live very joyfully. And all my worries, all of my problems are going to be uh, taken care of by the Master Himself. Now, even though uh, uniting our hearts or receiving the heart of the Master is very crucial, it's very important. But we are the people who, de who despise the heart of our Master. So, and we give much importance to our own heart. Yes, we remove the heart of the master in its position and there we place our own heart. Satan is very cunning now, he has been deceiving people, following you know, their judgment, their thought, you know, their choice, and all these things you know, make their own heart. Now, in terms of believing in God, who is our true master? You know, our master actually stands for the Lord, you know, God. Because God is our creator. God is the one who provides you know, everything for us to live. He's the one who, who gives life and takes life. So now, if you want to live, you know, the spiritual life properly and happily, knowing the heart of God is very important. But now, how can you know the heart of God? This is what I want to share with you uh, today. You know, even in the relationship of people, it is very important for people to communicate, you know, to talk. If you are living in the family, in the house whereby you know, the husband never speaks to the wife, so no matter how, how many good goods they have, no matter how much money they have, there will be no joy, there will be no comfort in this house. Among colleagues, if they live without you know, sharing their hearts and talking to each other, now, in their surrounding, even though there may be no problem, now the problem starts to rise from each and everyone's heart. And some of them are very like a foolish, you know, problem, you know, very small uh, issues. So because of not talking to each other, one may just develop a thought, you know, and begin to think that ah, this person, you know, maybe hates me. 
But did you see how he was looking at me? So you and But what's wrong? What have I, have I done? Now many kind of thoughts as such, you know, arise in our heart, you know, from nowhere. When you have a certain achievement or certain success, immediately you may begin to think that ah, maybe my colleagues will have jealousy you know, towards me. Now, when there is no communication and heart sharing among you and those people, if you cannot listen their true heart, what they are thinking, very easily every one of us we are dragged you know, by the thoughts to imagine and we believe those imaginations now we can see how you know, the communication you know, the heart sharing is very important among people in the society because if I know the heart of my colleague the heart of my spouse the heart of my child then we can live, you know, a very uh, beautiful life. So now, if knowing the hearts of those people is important, how much more is it, it is important us knowing the heart of God? We need to communicate to God and know His heart precisely. But now, problem. We don't know where God is, we don't know how to meet him and talk to him face to face. We don't know his you know, cell phone number so that we can make a call and talk to him. Then how can we meet God, how can we talk to him so that we may know his heart? This is why God has given us the Bible. Now this Bible is a, a communication means between us and God. While, while praying, you know, we can uh, show God our problems, our issues, our challenges. Then as we read the Bible, God speaks to us you know, through the Bible. Then one day I was also very curious to know what is the true heart of God. So allow me to read the book of First Timothy. Now the, yeah, the Bible talks about the will of God. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Timothy 1, now here the Bible is talking about the will of God. Verse 3 says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, here the Bible talks about the will of God. What is the will of God? Because the Bible says this is good and acceptable before Him. So the, the will of God is that He desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, if people know the heart of God in this way, what will they do in their life? What will they do in their life? Now they will be seeking of the will of God. They will pursue the will of God. Rather, rather than pursuing their own will, their own desire, their own heart. Now they are going to search from the Bible, knowing exactly you know, how they can seek salvation, how they can meet the truth. However, Satan has planted you know, a strong heart to believe in ourselves. He makes us just following you know, any kind of thought that arises in our mind. Because of that, we miss to know the will of God. If we don't know the heart of God, then we can't even have like a good relationship with him. 
if I just think in the normal society, in the community, who is your true friend? The person you can speak to everything which is in your heart. And the person who can tell you also everything that is in their heart. When there is this heart flow, you call this is my best friend. You know, even if someone may come and give you money, every day give you money and he just leaves. You can't call this my best friend. Do you know why? Because at a certain moment, even you begin to doubt, why is he giving this money? Why, what is the heart behind it? So now here you can see clearly the heart of God explained in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 and 4. What is good and acceptable in the heart of God? The Bible says that he desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. However, the Bible also shows other people who just choose to follow their own wish, their own will. So these kinds of people, they can never inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I want to give you an example. Now, there are people found in the book of Matthew chapter 7. Now, let's read Matthew chapter 7. Then you can talk about this parable which Jesus now spoke. Yes. So now we can read Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. If you are there, I will read. Now the Bible says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, here Jesus is warning people. Everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. But now, who can enter the kingdom of heaven? The Bible says that he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Ah, uh, if you can do the will of God, then you can automatically go to the kingdom of heaven. But on the other hand, even if you cry all day long, all of your life, Lord, Lord, that, that will not guarantee you to go to heaven. Now here Jesus also emphasized the will of the Father in heaven that is very important in our life. Now we can see verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice loneliness. Now we can see these people, they had certain wills, certain desires of them in their hearts. A certain desire in their heart. Uh, their, their own will. Uh, but we see now they never cared about the will of God. What is the will of God, if you remember? She wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. How about the people in Matthew chapter 7? For them, they just want to always you know, shout, Lord, Lord. These are the people who thought that we have to prophesy so much. We have to cast out demons every day. We have to do so many wonders and miracles. Everyone, I'm sorry to say so, but God is never interested in all these things. As long as you have not yet received salvation, as long as you have not met the truth, even if prophesies for all people in the world, 
Even if you may give a miracle to every single person on this planet. Even if you may perform a miracle to every single person on this planet. Even if you may speak in tongues and do so many great things. But if you haven't received salvation. If you haven't known the truth. In other words, if your sins are not yet forgiven, I'm sorry, but you'll only go to hellfire. That's why Jesus says that these people they can never enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what is the most important thing? Knowing the heart of God. What is the heart of God then? Not just prophesizing, you know, speaking in tongues and doing many miracles. No. Now the will of God is for me to receive salvation. It is for me to meet the truth. Ah, now I have been suffering for sin for many years. Even though I go to church and I perform many, uh, many things. But still, whenever I stand before God, I find myself in sin and condemnation. So this is an, a person who never met the heart of God, who doesn't know the will of God. Now, when we read here, Matthew chapter 25, the story that we read in the beginning. Now, here the Bible is talking about three different you know, uh, servants. And what are, how are these servants? Now, the Bible says that. Uh, there was a servant who was given five talents. Another one who was given, you know, two talents. And lastly, you know, uh, the last one was given one talent. But now, we see now, the, the person who received five talents, he knew the heart of the master. What was the result? Because of knowing the heart of the master, now he could do something that pleased the master. Because what he did was matching with what the master was expecting in his heart. Now this man was blessed so much. Now his master, upon his return, he complimented him so much. Uh, we can see, uh, we can read here, Matthew chapter 25. Verse 20 and 21. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you deliver to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things, enter into the joy of your Lord. Now, Master was very happy with him. And now, because Master was a very great rich man, you see, the joy of the Master even, you know, uh, was at the point of uh, giving everything to his servant. Why? Not because this man was very diligent. It's not because this man tried to work very hard. But the reason is because this man he knew the heart of the master. Therefore, this what we are talking about today. If you know the heart of God, then it is going to result into great blessing. Now, this is the man who knew clearly what is the will and the heart of his master. Now, there is a second, second man here. And now, this man, for him, he received only two talents. But now there is a problem. He didn't know what to do. But now, in the process when he didn't know what to do, of course, he had even his own opinions. He had some, some thoughts and some, you know, plans in his heart. 
But now he not just to follow his thoughts and his plans in his heart. Now he began to speak to his fellow servants. She went to the one who is still fine. Hey, I need your help. I don't know what, what to do with this talent. Or oh, what did you do with yours? Then when he spoke to the one who knew the heart of, of the past appearing, and now he could also gain the wisdom of the master through the first servant. And now the Bible says that he did likewise, which means he copied him. Then when the master came also he was very happy with him. She, she was very pleased just like the first servant. But you remember in the beginning he didn't know what to do. However, because of talking, because of sharing his heart and communicating with others, although he didn't know the heart of the master, but he could learn the heart of the master from others. The worst thing that you did in our spiritual life. It is not us committing mistake or doing something wrong. But when we close our hearts to others. Because when you close our hearts to others, then we miss something valuable, spiritual that we could gain from others. So now here there is a servant who received only one talent. What did he do? Even he was in need or he was not in need of talking to his colleagues. Because he was full of his own thoughts, his own plans. Now we can see how he spoke to his master. Now verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. Yes, I knew like this, I thought like this, you know, I, I imagined like this. This is what he was just speaking to his master as an excuse. Now we can see that his will was very important than the will of the master. Not knowing the heart of the master was not a problem. The biggest problem is that his heart was closed even he could not learn the heart of his master from his colleagues. Don't you think that the second servant did have also his own plans? Yes, he also had them. But now he could break this and learn from others by talking to the first servant. However, the last servant now is a person who could only follow what was filled in his heart. Now the last servant who was given one is a servant who followed only the things that were filled in his heart. But now we can see what is the result. The master was very angry towards him. And he rebuked him seriously. And he gave him a punishment. And he took away the one talent that he had given him. So now, what I'm trying to say is, knowing the heart of our Master is the beginning of all blessings. Then forsaking our own heart and receive the heart of the Master, this is how we experience now all the good things God has prepared for us. However, many people just believe the thought that comes to their mind. They just imagine something and they believe in it. They don't need to ask. They don't need to seek for the guidance. But now they believe that what they think and what they have planned is totally true. What does the Bible say? What the Bible says is the most important thing. 
For this is good and acceptable in the, in the eyes of our God. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now if God desires all men to be saved, do you think God can just sit down and it ends with the desire? Even me as a human being who is weak, who is lucky, if I desire to go to town, I'll make sure I go to town and I arrive there. If I desire to wash my clothes, I'll make sure that I wash my clothes and finish. So even we human beings, whatever thing we wish, we desire, we end up fulfilling them. Then how much more the Heavenly Father who is Almighty? Now God desires all that to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God not just sit down and end up with the desires. God had to work, he had to do something so that we can be free from our sin. This is why God came down, you know, with this body of human beings. And then God had saved the wage of sin is death. And because all people were sinners, God paid the payment, the wage of sin, instead of us. This is how Jesus was crucified at the cross and he shed all his blood. He didn't end there. Even on the third day, Jesus rose again. After washing and cleaning all of our sins, uh, Jesus went back to heaven. Yes, yes, and now the Bible says God has accomplished the perfect salvation. If we read the Bible carefully, if we don't harden our hearts, first of all, we get to realize ah, this is the will of God, this is the heart of God. Uh, and now, by seeking for His will and His heart, Finally, you will receive salvation, you will have all of your sins washed away. Satan wants to disturb this work. He feeds so many different thoughts in the hearts of people. You can now pray all night long. Hey, you can prophesy. You can cast out demons. Now, as people are very busy now with their own wills, with their own heart, they need to receive the heart of God, the will of God. These are the people who have found the book of Matthew chapter 7. However, if you try to read, you know, the above verses, then the Bible says that there are so many. And they are in the white way. Because Satan has deceived the whole world. Now I hope that you who are listening to this word, please receive this word with a pure heart. Why Jesus died for me? Why at the cross did he tell me that you know, uh, it is finished? Why the Bible keeps saying that, you know, I'm washed, I'm sanctified, I'm made righteous? Why the Bible keeps saying that? Then, if you are able to meet that, then you will realize the heart of God and you will receive the heart of God. So you will see how your life will be so much. Thank you very much. So today we will share up to here. Allow me to pray and finish. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for your love and your care. Every time you want to guide us in the blessings. Lord, I pray for all followers. Let all of us meet your heart, Lord. Now we can see the servant with five talents by knowing the heart of Master 
He was blessed so much and he lived happily. It may happen that we don't know the heart of God. And Lord, we believe that uh, you will give us this function of communicating, you know, fellowship and sharing with others so that we can learn what we don't have. Thank you, Lord. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope to see you next time.